I wonder, yeah, this was in, in reference yeah. with the lawyer. Well, if you have no standing, you have no standing, yeah? Yeah. That's the problem. It's the same as people filing UCCs. If you, don't, if you are not considered a property holder, you have no right to, to enter into a UCC. That's the whole reason people get in trouble. So I would suggest to you all that effort is better focused on what we're proposing to do in terms of wills, the uh, deed poll, and then, of course, the affidavit. Yeah? Okay. That sounds great. All right. All right. So but look, let's, let's have a look at the material that's going to come up, see how that's relevant to you. If, if there are pieces missing, let's fill that in, okay? Because it's, 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 I mean, we are getting this together with feedback from many, many people, and your feedback is just as valid as anybody else. Okay? I thank you tremendously. All right. Good on you. Thank you. Have a good evening. Thanks. I'm just going to uh, see if we can get a couple more questions in the chat, and then I'll go to the next comment. Please, anyone that wants to speak, I'd be honoured to speak with you. Um, I'll just answer a couple more questions, and then look to see who's on the line. Um, let's have a look and see. Uh, we've covered the question on uh, prison. Um, uh, let's see, what have we got? Uh, da -da 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 -da. Uh, are there any other questions here? Uh, okay, question. Will there be a heading in the applicable area for the children court remedy that is coming soon on Eucadia? Uh, yes, there will be. Uh, do you have to be a member? Um, well, everyone is a, ultimately a member of One Heaven. Um, no, look, it's not, it's not restricted. It's there for anyone. I mean, uh, the material will be, uh, will be available to be downloaded. You don't have to do any kind of special um, registration that's basically available in the public. Um, okay, other questions? I can't see any questions at the moment. So I'll just go to the, to the next caller. Hi, can you hear us? Hello. Hi. Hey, Frank, it's Aaron here in Idaho. I have a question in regards to um, all of the information that's been coming recently has been like a barrage. It's just, it's overwhelming almost. And I've sort of hesitated in taking action to file any sort of a deed poll or will for my case, uh, my trial, which is on the Monday the 29th, what would you recommend for somebody in my position who hasn't sent any sort of notice or rejection of summons? What would you recommend I do in such a short amount of time? Well, the 29th is, uh, is uh, coming up to next week. So what I would, um, uh, if I was in your position, the things that I would, Think, firstly, is it, can I just ask a couple quick, is it a criminal, civil, criminal? It's criminal. It's for driving without privileges. Okay, so, okay. And so it's, right, okay, driving, right. Um, I would, um, first off, I would um, look to, let's have a look at this. Um, you're not going to get a will and testament recorded in, in two days, yeah? Right. Um, you're not even going to necessarily get anything effectively up with uh, the uh, county recorder in a couple of days. Um, uh, what, you don't think you'd be able to have something registered in a day? I think you well, can go up there, but what I would do is keep it real simple to a deed. I mean, a deed is effectively a, a, a deed. It can be a simplified will. The one thing you need is you need a document separate to your rebuttal of the summons, which states that, you, that, that someone has been appointed the executor uh, of the XYZ estate, yeah? Right. So the D, as a deed poll, only needs to state categorically and clearly who has been appointed the executor of the XYZ estate for the management of all the affairs, yeah? Okay. According to the rules of administration, and those rules of administration can be uh, of Eucadia, yeah? Right. All right? That's all you need up there. If you've got that in place, then you can have that recorded, time-stamped, notarized, and recorded as a, as a public record. Then what you need to have in QuickSmart is... Um, 
on the back of the summons and you glue it, a rebuttal of the summons. Yeah? Right on. Okay, I am uh, I am occupying the office of general executor of da, 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 um, as demonstrated by filing XYZ. Yeah? Right. And um uh you know I uh, then I will um uh I reject uh the uh presumption uh of attendance um in the capacity of, of uh, any trustee. Um uh, uh I um as general executor uh I um uh, order the court uh, to have this matter uh, set off administratively uh, as there is no um, valid um, cause. Um, uh, should I attend, it shall be by special invitation, if it's not resolved, special invitation, um, uh, where I'll be appointing, uh, upcoming as executor uh, and will appoint the appropriate uh, magistrate as the trustee to have the matter uh, immediately discharged with extreme prejudice. Okay, keep it really simple. I've just I've just thought of that off, off the top of my head relative to you, and I may have mucked up a few of the words, but it needs to be really, really straightforward and simple. Don't go on about you know God gave me this or you know you know according to the Bible. Just keep it real simple. Yeah, so that yeah. they know you are the general executor. You've given an order. You've re rebutted the the summons, they should set off the matter now. If they don't set off the matter and you are you are forced to stand up, then when you stand up, you'll be appointing the magistrate or judge in front of you as a trustee. I'm the general executor. I'm appointing you as my trustee. I, I now order you to have the matter um, set off, discharged with extreme prejudice. Thank you very much. Okay? Yeah, very, very good. Now, I have one more thing to add to that, and that's... Um as, as a general executor, um, we kind of discussed this before, a general executor should not be setting foot in a courtroom uh, except unless they're forced or threatened. What if we appointed somebody to um, fill that position for us? Would that put them in some sort of jeopardy, or would that be maybe no, a... No, no, you mean, I mean, the court, look, a the, the couple of things come into play. One, if we don't give them due notice, then how, how possibly can they, they know who's being acting as an executor, Yeah. Right, 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 and if and if we don't appoint them, then we leave them no choice but to act in a defensive way in the courtroom, because we're effectively accusing them of being executive of some tort. Yeah, that's correct. And if you appoint, if you're changing them as executive of some tort, and you had the knowledge then to pursue that, then that could be the end of their career. Yeah, I mean you're threatening their whole livelihood. Yeah, I agree. Right. Okay, it's really it's it's you've got to see it from their perspective, yeah. Absolutely. So if you're going to appoint someone as as you, as effectively a, a an executor uh, or your administrator, yeah, um, right. which is right. someone that has the uh, powers of the executor um, as an agent, then um, you've got to give them notice. Yeah. And no, they 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 the court would be very foolish, if done properly, to threaten such an individual. Yeah? Okay, I, I, I'm with you 100% on this. I think I'm tracking pretty good. Um, okay. Well, good on, luck with what you're doing. Um, and, one, more, one more question, and, Frank. One more question. Yeah, on, no. on, would, would we put them on their oath and bond on the deed, or is that something that needs to be done on their letter of rejection? No, no, it's just, it's, you can say it in the rebuttal that you accept their oath of public office. Yeah, as a trustees, as public servants and public trustees, you know, we will be coming, uh, having ex having accepted that you will be under your oath as public servants and public trustees of a court of public record. In other words, if I'm going to come, and and I'll be coming by special invitation, I'll be appointing the judge, the trustee, under their oath as a public servant and public trustee. Uh, for a court of public record. Make it clear. If I'm coming, that's what it is, and I'll speak it. Excellent. Okay? As per my invitation, I'm here by special invitation, 
I declare, as I stated, this is a court of public record. If there's no objection, and I accept your oath as a public servant and appoint you public trustee as a trustee of this matter. Very good. Thank you. Okay. Good. Good. All the best with it. Thank you very much. I appreciate what you're doing. No, no. All good. Okay. All right. So I'm just going to go to the next caller, and then I'll answer some of the um, uh, the questions that people have. Okay. Uh, Connecticut, can you hear us? Hi. Um, hi, Frank. I'm calling from Connecticut, and I am thankful for all your information. And I just am a little bit confused on the EDP. And when you finish doing the EDP, then how then do you survive in their system as in having commerce, driving, traveling, passports, et cetera? Okay. Good, good question, and I'm glad you asked. In the, in the ecclesiastical deed poll, did you see anywhere in that process that said you will be rejecting their benefits? No. No. So by doing an ecclesiastical deed poll, you haven't said that you don't want to receive, for example, Social Security if that was something you're receiving, yeah? Correct. It hasn't said that you don't want to have access to health care if you have health care, yeah? Okay. Okay, so the process as it's set now, in no way does it, does it require you to step out of a system where you need these things to survive, right? Okay. Okay, so if you've done an ecclesiastical deed poll or you've followed through Number one, at no point does it put you in jeopardy. Number two, it doesn't state in any fashion that you wish to stop any of these benefits. All you've done is stated your intent in a particular way as to knowing who you are, what you are, that you are in fact the executor in control of your own uh, affairs. What we're now saying is the ecclesiastical deed whole process, whilst it is clear in its intent, we are battling a system that is like something out of uh, Willy Wonka or some Harry Potter, there you go. If you don't say the magic abracadabra word, they're not going to recognise, which is why we now say that a will and testament is a form that they recognise as the expression of our intent. Have you followed that tonight? You, does that make sense? <clears throat> Correct. So by doing this, you're just showing that, look, I'm the executor of this slave number, but I can still use the slave number to deal with the, your system, basically. Well, you have to, don't you? They don't give you a choice, do they? Right, because you were saying under necessity, you're forced to. Exactly, exactly. So it's a, okay. re it's a really good question. And, and it's why I've asked people in the last few weeks, please just hold off on the ecclesiastical deed process while we do this transition. Not because it's wrong. It's nothing wrong. I've never put anything in there I believe is wrong. It's just that uh, there is uh, a set of kind of rose-coloured glasses that the public servants of the Roman system recognise, and we are going to conform to that and we're going to test them on that. If this is genuine remedy, we will conform to that and make clearly our intent in a form that they recognise. And they will either comply to their own rules or they won't. But there will be no reason for them to deny. And if they do, then, hey, look, at the end of the day, I've always said, at the end of the day, when, when we strip the law from them, we'll just be dealing with criminals and, and pirates, right? Correct. But until can I we ask get you to another, that day, hmm? Sorry. Can, can I ask you another question that's been yeah, really yeah, driving please. me nuts? No, no. Okay. So I've been doing a lot of research, and I see that there are some people that they use the private side of documents um, or bills or tax bills or things of this nature, and they sign it on the private side, and they're literally like selling their signature to balance 
the or adjust the accounting debt debit right. 